So we started our journey of investing in stock markets through the topics of portfolio management and mutual fund. In those topics, we have learned how we can directly or indirectly invest in the stock markets. But what if this is not sufficient for you? What if you want to further up your game? What if you are like mutual funds done, portfolio management done? Now tell me more, what next can we really do? Let us say you are someone who is ready to take higher risk. You are someone who has a higher risk appetite. If that is so, then let me welcome to the world of F and O, right? By F and O, uh, we mean futures and options. Futures and options, it's nothing but a part of the topic that we are going to discuss now. We consider them as derivative products. At the very onset, let me make it very clear that as we will study this topic more and more, you are going to find it very fascinating. Yes, indeed, it's a very fascinating topic. But that's the reason at the very beginning itself, I want to make it very clear that there is some reason that why we first have a school, then a college, then a university, right? So the same thing should be done even over here. Start with mutual funds, then go for direct investing, that is portfolio management, and finally venture into futures and options, right? For example, if you are a very bright student, let us say you are in the 10th standard and you are a very bright student, you can't write a letter to the university that, see, I am a very bright student, please allow me to sit in the final year exam. That is not possible. We have to all go through the drill. So you should experiment with the stock markets through mutual funds. Then you should go for a direct investment. And finally, you should venture into futures and options. The reason why I'm saying this is because as you will study this topic, it's quite possible that you may enjoy this topic like anything. And you feel that, yes, let me start directly through futures and options. And it's very much likely that you may burn your fingers in the F and O and you may never look at the stock market again. Right. So we will go one after the other. But yes, let's understand what exactly is F and O. In this episode, we will do a brief introduction of what do we mean by a derivative. So let's discuss what do we mean by a derivative. Right, futures and options, we will come, uh, we will return back to a bit later. Now, in maths, I'll just give you a simple example. We want to understand what do we mean by derivative. Okay, see, in mathematics, let us say I write this equation. Y equals to 5 plus X. Let's say this is an equation that I'm writing in maths. The moment I say y equals to 5 plus x, you know, mathematically, I can say that y is a derivative of x. Derivative of x, value of y will depend upon the value of x. As the value of x will change, so will the value of y. I hope you agree with me, right? If the value of x is 1, then y is 6. If the value of x is 6, then value of y will be 11. As I keep on changing the value of x, the value of y will keep on changing. Value of y is derived from the value of x. And that is the reason I'm saying that y is a derivative of x. So what we can say here is that x is turning out to be some kind of an underlying, right? Underlying is that item whose value will fluctuate. So its value will fluctuate independently. So X is turning out to be an underlying, while Y we can say is a derivative, right? Y is a derivative. The value of underlying changes and from that I will derive the value of Y and that's the reason I say Y is a derivative. So we will understand a derivative product as a product whose value will fluctuate as the value of the underlying fluctuates. This underlying can be anything. This underlying can be a stock. This underlying can be an index. This underlying can be some bond prices. This underlying can be some currency, right? 
uh, it can even be a commodity. We are not arguing with what the underlying can be. What we are saying is that the value will be derived on the basis of the value of the underlying. So when we say derivative, what comes to our mind is, yes, what comes to our mind is that value will be derived, right? We are saying value will be derived from an underlying, right? We say first point, value will be derived from an underlying. As the underlying will fluctuate, the value of the financial instrument will also fluctuate. You can say then that is one of the basic conditions for something to be classified as or something to be understood as a derivative. But then if you really study this first condition well, you will realize perhaps everything is a derivative. Think for a moment. Let us say I am a trader. Okay, there is a certain item. I do trading of that item. Then I can argue that my business of trading in this item is nothing but a derivative because my profit will depend upon the number of units that I'm able to sell. So in some year, I'm able to sell more units, my profit will be higher. In some years, I'm in a position to sell fewer units, then my profit will be lower. So I argue that my business is nothing but a derivative. Or let us say I buy shares of Reliance. Okay, I buy shares of Reliance. As the share price of Reliance goes up and down, so is the value of my holding. And so is my profit or the loss. So I argue that my act of buying shares of Reliance is a derivative. You know why? Because Reliance is, is nothing but the share of Reliance is nothing but the underlying. As the share price goes up, my fortune goes up. As the share price comes down, my fortune comes down. Or let us say I buy gold. Because I buy gold, I again argue that, see, this is nothing but a derivative. Because as the price of gold will go up and down, so is my gain or loss. So if you say that value will be derived from an underlying, then perhaps everything that we are doing in our lives will become a derivative. So is doing business a derivative? because the profit will obviously depend upon the quantum of units that I am selling. Is the buying of shares of Reliance or buying of gold a derivative? Because as their prices will go up and down, so will my profit. Because if you say it so, as I said earlier also, perhaps every financial activity that I am doing, perhaps every financial activity is nothing but a derivative. But it is not so because there are two more conditions for something to be classified as a derivative. Let's see, what are those two more conditions? Condition number two, right? In condition number two, we say, no investment or very little investment is required okay no investment or very little investment is required the moment i will put this condition all the illustrations that we were arguing earlier will get ruled out if you are doing a business huge amount of investment will be required if you are buying shares of reliance you have to pay the full share price of reliance if you are buying gold you have to make the full payment for the gold you cannot say no investment or very little investment is required no if the share price of reliance let us say is around 2000 rupees i have to pay entire 2000 to buy that share isn't it so full investment is required it will not be something like this that the share is trading at 2000 and I have to pay only 20 rupees to buy the share of Reliance. No, it's not so. I have to make the full payment for the same. Similarly for the gold, similarly for the business. Still, there's one more condition. Condition number three. You know what is condition number three? This is a contract whose settlement will be in future. Settlement is in future. On a future date, we will settle this particular contract. Okay, you are doing business right now. 
Okay. Similarly, if you are buying shares of Reliance, you will get delivery of the shares of Reliance right now, right? It's not something that will be settled in future. It's not like I pay full amount of shares and then I tell the seller that fine, you take the full payment, but give me shares after one month. No, if I'm paying right now, I want the shares also right now, isn't it? The same thing will happen with gold. If I go to a jewelry shop and I'm making full payment for the gold, I want gold right now. So these are not transactions which are going to be settled in future. So everything that we were discussing till now, that business whose profit was going up and down, it is not a derivative. Buying shares of Reliance, not a derivative. Buying gold, not a derivative. Because although the first condition will get fulfilled, there is definitely an underlying, but the second and the third conditions are not getting satisfied. So I want to now know what can really be an example of derivative. Now, of course, we are going to discuss financial derivatives in this particular topic. Uh, by financial derivatives, I mean derivatives which are linked to shares or I can say derivatives linked to stock and index. That's the, what you can say, the main uh, portion of this particular topic. However, having said that, let me give you an example which perhaps you will understand better. I'll go a little bit off the topic a grid, but this is something that you already know and that's the reason it will be that much easier for you to understand what exactly is the concept of the derivative. So let me give you a simple example over here. Something that you are already aware of and hence it will be easy for you to understand. I'm sure you are aware about forward exchange contract, isn't it? I'm giving you an example on the basis of forward exchange contract. And I will demonstrate before you that a forward exchange contract that you are aware of, that you may have studied at the earlier level, ultimately is turning out to be a derivative. I'll show you how that exactly is. Yes. Let us say, let us say you are an importer let us say you have imported raw materials worth dollar one lakh okay worth a dollar one lakh okay now let us say the spot rate the rate right now the exchange rate between the dollar and the indian rupee for simplicity let's assume it is 70 rupees so one dollar it is trading at 70 rupees right now so if you have to make a payment today, if you have to make a payment today, you have to pay 70 lakhs. But your supplier has given you a credit of three months. So I am supposed to make payment after three months, let's say. So after three months, I'll be making the payment. Now, I'm really worried that what will be the exchange rate after three months? I'm really concerned about that, that what that exchange rate will be. So I inquire from my bank, that at what rate a forward contract is available. So I ask my bank at what rate a forward contract is available. My bank says a forward contract is available at $1 equals to rupees 71. So I can enter into a forward contract. If I enter into a forward contract, I will be able to buy dollar at 71 rupees, right? So $1 can be purchased for rupees 71. What happens in a forward exchange contract is whether the dollar rate goes up or down, I will have to buy dollar at the contracted rate of 71. Fine. So let us say we enter into, let's say we enter into a forward exchange contract. Okay. And after three months, let us say, let's see what is the position after three months. we say actual rate i will compare that with the forward rate then we say profit or gain per dollar our forward rate is 71 but the actual rate turns out to be 72 so 
So after three months, I'm supposed to make payment to my client, right? That was an importer. I'm supposed to make payment to my clients. Now, I've already entered into a forward contract, but think for a moment, think for a moment. Let's say we have not entered into a forward contract. If you had not entered into the forward contract, then you will have to buy dollar at whatever rate that prevails after three months. I hope you agree with me. So let's say I am supposed to make a payment after three months. I don't have any forward contract. So after three months, I will go to the Forex dealer. The Forex dealer tells me, let's see the rate right now is 72. So I'll have to buy dollar at 72. But because you have entered into a forward contract, you can buy that dollar just for 71. So what is trading right now at 72? I can buy for 71. Can I say I'm saving one rupee per dollar? Can I say I'm saving one rupee per dollar? So my gain per dollar, right, that last column, I can say that per dollar, I am gaining one rupee. Agreed? Let us say after three months when you are making the payment, the actual rate is 74. Actual rate is 74. But your contracted rate is 71, right? So if you have not entered into a forward contract, you will have to pay 74 rupees, but I will pay only 71. You know, I will be patting my back that Ashish, you did a wonderful thing by entering into this forward contract. Because if I had not, then I would have ended up paying three rupees more. So my gain per dollar, it is turning out to be three rupees over here. Just see how your profit is going up or down depending upon the underlying. You know, the underlying over here is the exchange rate, okay? And as the exchange rate is fluctuating, so is your gain or the loss. Yes, there can even be a loss. Let us say the rate after three months is turning out to be 70 rupees. If the rate turns out to be 70 rupees, then you will have to still pay 71. When you entered into a forward contract, you are getting a right as well as an obligation. Remember, when we enter into a forward contract, your rate is getting locked, locked, right? I'm using the word, the rate, the rate is getting locked, okay? You will have to pay 71 rupees irrespective of whatever is the actual rate. So if the rate is 70, you still have to pay 71. That means per dollar, you have lost one rupee over here. What if the rate turns out to be 67? 67, let's say the Indian rupee appreciates all of a sudden like anything. Your contracted rate is 71. Although the dollar is available at 67 rupees, you will still have to pay 71 rupees over here. You have lost four rupees over here. I hope you are getting my point, right? So what I'm trying to say is that this example that we have taken of a forward exchange contract, this example of forward exchange contract is nothing but a real good illustration of what is a derivative all about. Just see, written back now, okay? Written back to those three conditions, three conditions. And you will realize that this forward contract is nothing but a derivative contract. Just see the three conditions. Please go through them. The three conditions. Value will be derived from an underlying. Tell me. What was the underlying in our example? The underlying is the exchange rate. Okay, the underlying is the exchange rate. Or you can even say that the underlying is the foreign currency. In our example, the foreign currency is the dollar. As the value of dollar will fluctuate, so is your gain or the loss, isn't it? Just see, in your example, the dollar rate is 72, 74, 70, 67. As the dollar rate fluctuates, so is your gain or loss. You can gain by one rupee, you can even lose away by four rupees. So that's what we say. The very first thing, it is having an underlying. The underlying is the foreign currency in our example. Next, look at it. No investment or very little investment is required. Today, when you enter into a forward exchange contract, you are not supposed to pay a huge sum of money. In India, depending upon bank to bank, 
you can enter into a forward exchange contract by payment of rupees 100 to perhaps a maximum of 250. So a forward contract rate, it ranges from 100 to 250. So this is the amount that you will have to pay when you enter into a forward contract. Compare that with the example that we had. Just see your example over here. You are an importer. You have imported dollar one lakh worth of raw material and the rate right now is 70. That means the value of this contract is 70 lakhs of rupees, 70 lakhs. Again, 70 lakhs, you are paying 100 rupees or 250. Don't you feel it's a very small amount that you are investing or very little amount that you are investing, isn't it? So that's the second condition that is getting fulfilled, isn't it? And look at the final condition. Settlement is in future. Settlement is in future. In our example, our forward contract is for three months. You see, written back to the example again, your client has given you a credit period of three months, right? Credit period of three months. So after three months, I'm supposed to make the payment. All this gain or loss, right? All these gains or losses, they are not happening right now. These gains or losses are happening after three months because after three months you will settle the contract and because you will settle the contract on a future date the third condition is also getting fulfilled so as you can observe now the example of forward exchange contract is fulfilling all the three conditions there is an underlying on the basis of which the gain or loss will be dependent upon so there is a derivation of gain or loss from the value of the underlying very small amount is required to be invested and i will settle the contract in future this is nothing but a good example of what we understand by a derivative press the bell icon on the youtube app and never miss another update